The first peregrine I ever saw, her name was Harriet, and she was the female at the site near the Sears Tower. That was hard when she was gone. I used to be able to tell you life history because it was so limited. Now we've had so many over the years. They historically were about 400, 500 pairs in the Midwest and the eastern part of the U.S., which were extirpated by the 1960s. There were none left there. And what scientists were finding were crushed eggshells. These are eggs that were collected in the 1890s. And when scientists compared the eggs, they said, wait a minute, these shell fragments are much thinner. What is causing this to happen? And we know now it has to do with DDT. What it does is inhibit calcium production. So the eggshells are too thin and the weight of the uh, adults incubating crushed them. Those peregrine eggs are a great example. They didn't know in the 1890s when they collected them that 60, 75 years later they were going to help scientists understand what was going on in the environment and help recover a species. The recovery has come way back from when we started. We've gone from one pair up to 27 territories. They're still being monitored on a variety of levels and it will be an ongoing process. Looking at prey species, looking at the peregrine genetics, looking at the eggs themselves. Now are the eggs hatching? aren't they? Are the young fledging successfully? For them to come off the endangered list, I can't be hand-holding them to the level they're at. But I want them to be self-sustaining. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs>